I'm Zoe from Zoe's Fancy Cakes and in today's video I'm going to have a go at making Mel from Arcane and we're going to be using my mould for this to see if we can adapt it to create this character. Let's start with the mould. So this is my Gemma mould guys, a lot of you will have seen me use it in videos before and what I'll do is I'll put a link up to how to use the mould in more detail so I'll put that up on the screen now for you. And we're going to need all the body parts. I'm going to mix some skin colour and I'm going to use the Serratino modelling paste with brown and a little bit of the orange mixed together here. And I'm going to use about 16 grams of the paste to put into the head. Now it's really important to press it really, really firmly into the face because the nose and the mouth area on the mould are very small. Now if you get a little crack or anything on the back of the head, that's fine. You just don't want it on the front. And I've got about nine grams of paste going into the body. Then we're going to fill the arms and the legs with the same skin color paste as well. So I'm not going to talk too much about using the molds in this particular video, guys. Remember, there is a video where I run through it all with a little bit more detail with you guys. But you don't want to rush to take them out. Let them have a little bit of firming up time. And what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to push a wire through the leg and there's a little slit at the top of the mold that I can push that into. Now one of them I'm going to keep a wire in, the other one I'm not. I've got one wire a little bit thinner than the other. So the thicker wire is a gauge 18 wire. Now I have got the odd little crack in the leg. I should really redo them but I'm just going to fill that in later. And what I'm also going to do is remove just the very sort of top edge so you can see where it touches the top of the mold and I'm just slicing that off slightly with a craft knife. Now, depending on what type of paste you use is gonna make it easier or more difficult when you're using these molds. Something that sets very quick is gonna crack when we try and do this. So you want something that's got a little bit of time to work with. So I'm gonna just remove the head from the mold. Just be careful not to push down and squash any of the features. And then we're gonna put in little lines where I want the bottom edge of the eyelid to come. And I'm just going to press in a little bit more at a chin. Now, you don't have to change the shape of the face for this if you don't want to. But I felt that to make it look more like Mel from Arcane, that I just wanted to move certain bits around. So I'm just pressing in a little bit around sort of the bridge of her nose. And I'm pressing under her eyes to give her kind of bags. And then I'm pressing into the eyes to create the eye socket, which we will later fill with white. So just a tiny bit of white for those eyes. Carefully pressing it in place. They don't want to stick out too much. So I'm going to remove the body from the mold. And again, just like we did on the legs, I'm going to use a really sharp little craft knife to just cut off the sharp edge and then just rub it down with my finger. So we're going to just remove the arms as well. And I'm going to cut between the fingers. So on my mold, the fingers are all kind of one. There's lines in there, but they're not. the fingers aren't separate. So I'm just going to cut them so they're a little bit separated. And then very carefully, see if you can get your fingers in there to just sort of bring them to a bit of a point. And I've just bent the wrist so that her hand sticks outwards a little bit. And now I'm just taking a tiny pinch of my modeling paste and I'm just trying to mix it with water just to create a bit of a, almost like cement, like polyfiller. <laughs> just to fill in that little crack on her leg and of course if you've got a crack you don't have to fill it in like I am doing you can just redo the legs in the mold or pressing them in a little bit firmer so we're just going to do a little bit of work on the face now and I'm going to use some powders now I'm using my petal palette but you can use loose dust as well you'll see that in a bit I, I try and mix between the two so first I'm going with white and just highlighting the areas that I want to be a little bit lighter in color then I'm just going to darken some areas that I want to look a little bit more shaded. Now it does help guys to have an image of the character that you're wanting to make to hand so you can see which parts of the face would be lighter in colour and which would be a little bit darker. Now the powders that you can see me using in the palette, they are edible but they don't work as well if you wet them. So if you want to wet your colour and paint it on rather than dry dusting like I am doing, then you might be better using the loose powder. I'm going to just use a bigger brush now to dust onto sort of the cheeks and around the jawline and we're just going to darken that a little bit more. I'm going to use a black edible pen or even a purple one. Oh no, it's brown. I've got brown. I'm going to use a brown edible pen to just kind of draw under each eye. And I've gone quite thick with this. And then I'm going to go across the top of the eye as well. 
I'm going to use some of the purple pens to also draw over there onto sort of those eyelash areas. And you can also use them to draw in any creases and dark lines. So just next to the nose, either side of the nose, I've used a pen and then I've brushed it out slightly with a slightly damp brush. I'm going to use my pens now for the eyes. So I'm going to start with green and then we're going to add a little bit of brown to that green. Just try and blend with a slightly damp brush. Just going to go over those eyelashes again. And then with the black pen, I'm going to draw on her eyebrows. I cannot get eyebrows even no matter how many times I try. Um, I should have really used, Sylvia Mancini has little eyebrow things, markers. I could have maybe had a go with them. Although they might have been a little bit big for this face actually. I'm just going to put a little black pupil in the middle of each eye. And then let's put her on some lipstick. So I'm using the purple and I'm using the edible pen. You can use the powders or you can mix them into a paint. But I found that the pens worked really well for me for this. So I have not fully covered the bottom lip because I wanted a, a section of it to be a little bit lighter. And then I'm blending it across with a damp brush. And I realize it's not the easiest to see for you guys, is it, on, on here? I don't think I had my lighting set very well for this one, guys. So I've just put some pen on my board and I'm just mixing it with a little bit of water just so that I can just get the tiniest amount around the edge of the eye. And then I'm also just darkening around the outer edge of the end of the nose as well. So I'm just wanting to lighten the bottom lip a little bit more. So I've just put a tiny bit of white dust on that bottom lip, just so it looks like a bit of light reflecting on there. I am going to start using some powders a little bit wetter now because it's going to make a more obvious um, line and colour. And on this program, they seem to have a lot of highlights around sort of the corner of their eyes in the bag. So we've wet some, or we've mixed rejuvenate with some white powder for that kind of area on the inside corner of her eye and just below on the bags. I've also mixed some black powder with rejuvenator, or you can use clear alcohol. I'm just going over those eyelashes just to really make them a bit more obvious. I'm going to do the same with brown and a really nice fine brush. And I'm just going into the crease that's kind of above her little eyelid. And this character has gold on her face, like a little bit under each eye. And then almost gold freckles. And I think this is really the bit that makes her look more like the character probably than anything else I've done on here. So for the legs, they have both got a wire in at the moment. We, we're we gonna make sure the larger leg holds all the weight, not the larger leg, the leg with the thickest bit of wire in, sorry guys. But I'm just gonna make some little heeled shoes for her. I'm just gonna use leftover skin color. And we're gonna create almost like a bit of a cone shape, but with the point cut off for the heel. Now, it seems small when I put it on in my fingers. Then when it's on the foot, it actually looks quite big. So I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Just give that a bit of time to set. And then I'm going to paint that heel. And instead of adding the shoe itself in modeling paste, I'm just going to paint the shoe on. The shoes don't quite look exactly like what she wears in the program. And I'm also not very neat with painting the gold. Um, the gold I'm using is just a water activated paint, guys. It is an edible one as well. So I'm just going to mix a bit of Tylos powder or CMC powder to some black modeling paste now. And I'm going to create a base for her. It's just going to harden up my modeling paste. My modeling paste is pretty hard, but I want it to go even harder. So I've rolled it pretty thick. I'm going to use a circle cutter. I'm going to cut out a disc. And I'm just going to place it on some polystyrene for the time being. And then I'm going to just work out the positioning that I want her legs to go in. I'm just going to insert them into the black paste and through the polystyrene. Now at a later date, we can remove all of this off the polystyrene and cut any wires out from the bottom that stick out. And then I've realized I need to do a bit more work before I stick them in. So I've just pulled them back out and bent the wire across at the top, like this kind of shape. So it's kind of like a zigzag. We'll just pop that to one side. I also realized her foot was starting to press into the black base a bit. So I'm going to give her some soles on her shoes just to give her a tiny bit of height on there. So it's just some thin modeling paste. I'm just going to use black, I've rolled it out, stuck it on the bottom of each foot, and then we're just going to cut around the outer edge. And let's stick that wire back in there. Now, can you see the top of the wire it has got that zigzag shape? It's so that the wire will come up through the leg 
but then it'll turn towards the center of the body a little bit more and then hopefully it will go up into the body. So I'm just gonna make a little hole in the body and let's see how the body sits onto this leg. Yep, so the leg wants to be to one side of the body, which it is. I'm just gonna remove a little bit from the top of my leg here. Now, depending on how long you've let your legs dry for, is gonna depend on how easy it is to remove anything from the top. I'm gonna do the same with the other leg. You'll also notice the wire on this one has been bent in towards the middle as well. So now I've done that, I'm gonna put them back in place on this piece of black. So that base, I'm cutting the thinner wire down a little bit shorter because this one's not holding the weight. And can you see where I push them together at the top? Both those wires are kind of coming in towards the middle. So that's gonna go into the body itself. So push that down, being very careful. You want to make sure at this stage that your legs are firm enough that they're gonna hold a little bit of weight, otherwise they will start to collapse. And very carefully push her down. And I'm not gonna smooth her out fully at this stage. What I'm gonna do is let her firm up a bit before I start smoothing the body into the legs properly. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the top of the neck and we're gonna insert the head. Apologies guys, I, my filming angles were atrocious for this one. <laughs> okay, so once the head is on, you can fill the crack between the head and the neck with a small piece of paste. Just pushing it on there. Just make sure it's got either edible glue or water on. For this, I'm just using water. And then what I'm gonna do is blend. So I've got a few sort of rubber-ended tools that are good for blending. So rubbing it up, sort of under the jaw and edge of the face and then down onto the neck. And we're gonna do the same thing on the joints between the hip and the body. So just a small piece of paste. It's usually smaller than you think it needs to be, this piece of paste that's going in there. So at this point, my legs and body are set in. I want them to be pretty firm now, guys. And I've rolled thin some, re well, I've rolled really nice and thin some white paste and we're gonna stick this onto her arms. So I'm gonna wrap it around sort of the wrist. Again, the outfit on mine doesn't quite match exactly the same as the one in the Arcane program. I went for a slightly easier option by doing a little bit less detail on mine. And it wants to come to just past her elbow. And then what I'm gonna do is cut like a little arch out from the top on both sides of the arm. So it looks like this. And then we're gonna put some little lines down into the paste. I'm just using my Dresden tool for this. And my arm isn't too soft at the moment. So if the arm is very soft, you might find you squash it when you are working with it. So just be very careful of that. And we're just gonna repeat the same on the other arm. So I'm gonna cut some really thin pieces of black that are gonna go around the top of the arm in a minute. And I'm also gonna roll some tiny pieces of white. So I'm rolling them so there's a point at each end and they're just gonna kind of go across the top of the sleeve in a minute. So I'm just gonna put a band of black around each arm. I'm gonna put it slightly above the white. So the piece of white that we've rolled is just gonna go along the edge of that arch on each arm. And then we're gonna roll a nice thin piece for the front of her dress. You're gonna to have to hold it against the figure and keep sort of taking it off to work out how wide you want it and how long you want it. So mine comes to just under the bust, which is fine. Anything that goes over the bust, I'm just cutting off. So it sits like so. And then I'm just gonna add some lines and then remove like a little triangle from each side. Now, I forgot I did actually crack the body a little bit when I stuck that on. And you can see it now that I've removed those triangles. So what I'm gonna do later is just patch that back in with a piece of paste. And I think I just want to show up a bit more leg there. So let's remove a bit more paste. Just be careful that you haven't glued it to the leg. Otherwise you're gonna find like me that it's a little bit harder to remove it from that area there. Now I'm just trying to put some little lines on. These don't show very well on camera. So again, I apologize. I was just Googling images of this character and trying to get a rough idea of any patterning and lines and stitching that went on her outfit. I did have to adapt mine and make them a little bit simpler. Have you guys been watching um, Arcane? I have been watching it. I've, I really enjoyed it actually. I didn't think I would, but I did really enjoy this program. If you'd like me to make more characters from this program, from Arcane, and let me know. I, I think I might do Jinx maybe. Let me know who your favorite character is from that program and we'll have a go. I'm making something from that. 
So I'm going to cut a small circle in white and we're going to cut that in half so we get two semicircles and these are going to go over her chest area. Just pushing it down a little bit with my fingers just to stretch it out. Now she's not going to expose any nipples because she doesn't have any but <laughs> where they would go I would still like the top of her dress to kind of come above that area. I realized I hadn't finished the arms at this stage so we're just putting on another bit of white just around that top edge of the arm and just above the white there's also a very thin trim of black as well that wants to go on there so I've just rolled this the same way as how I rolled the white earlier but a slightly smaller version of it and that's going to go on both sides of the arms like that so I'm going to cut thin pieces of black these are going to go across the top of her outfit now I know it looks like I did it all quite fast I actually did this character over quite a few days because I wanted to let her set because I was picking her up so much I was worried that my fingers were going to melt the paste so I did want it to be nice and firm just filling in that bit of the crack in her waist there with a bit of skin tone so I've rolled out some more of the white paste nice and thin and we're going to cut a bit of shape for the back of her dress now it's longer at the back than it is the front I'm going to keep holding it against her so we can check out the length I'm going to try and put some creases in a little bit put some water on her bum so it sticks in place and I'm going to push it so it comes part way up her back. And then just trim a little bit off the top. I'm going to cut out another triangle, this time from the back, so that it's kind of a bit of a diamond slash square shape on each side that's removed. Just neaten up the edges. And then I'm going to take a piece of dark brown. So I've just got brown and black mixed together for the hair. And we're going to attach this to sort of the top of her head. And I'm going to leave it where I've pinched it at the bottom to create almost like a bun shape. Now, I don't think I have a hair right at all on this, but this is kind of my underneath bit. And then we're going to go over the top of this and bulk it out shortly. We'll just put a couple of hairlines just in the front. And also this is going to sort of press it down firmly as well. And I'm going to put a little ball of paste up near the top toward the back of her head as well. And then let's stick around some ears. So I've got a little oval of skin tone. Let's just press that down and when we press it down it makes a bit of a dip in the middle and then just use the pointier end of the dressing tool to put in a few more details i think i'm just going to bulk that hairline up here bring it a bit further forward let's put some little lines in i think a hair sticks up a little bit more there as well so i'm just going to put a piece of paste on just to give her a bit more volume at the top in the center of her sort of head and then we've got a long thin piece, which is kind of part of her headdress slash jewelry. Now I know you can't tell because it's the same color as her hair at the moment, but we will paint that up and it'll look different in a bit. And then we're gonna cut a little shape to go onto her forehead. So let's just press that on nice and tight on the top of her head. And then she has got like a tiny, tiny square or diamond shape that just comes off the bottom of that. So I've tried to cut that out carefully. Oops, sticking to my craft knife and you can press down in the middle of it as well so that it's got sort of almost like a little hole in the middle and I'm just going to try and texturize the edge of her hairline here just bringing it forward and slightly in front of her ear then I've rolled some little thin sausage shapes of hair to give her some like little braided bits and then a thin piece of black over the top of that which we can paint up gold later as well so I'm going to put a few of these on. I don't think I put the right amount on. I don't even know if I've got them quite going in the right direction, guys. I actually, like, despite watching the program, couldn't then find images of what her hair looked like from the back. And I'm also going to mix some of these and kind of put them around that sort of... I'm going to call it a bun area. I don't know if it's a bun. But yeah, we're going to put some of those on there as well. Now I think maybe I went a little bit big in the end with her hair. So just watch out that you don't go too big. Also, the bigger you go with the hair, obviously the more weight is on her neck and she's only got a fairly small neck. But at this stage, she's pretty set as her neck and body and legs. So hopefully the weight of this won't weigh down on her too much. So we're also putting the same shape pieces across the front of her head as well. I'm just trying to fill in any gaps now. Some more little thin pieces that we can put over each bit of hair 
And remember, they won't show up too well at the moment, but once we paint them up later, they're gonna look really nice. So I still need to finish the bottom section of her, but I'm just gonna get out some gold. Now I did just stick a ball of paste on her finger for a ring. Her ring doesn't look like this, but we're simplifying things for this and then I'm painting it up gold. So while we've got the gold out, we're gonna paint our some earrings. Now I can't remember if I showed you guys me doing the earrings. It's just a tiny, tiny rectangle of paste that we just pushed against each ear. And then we're painting that sort of jewel but it's, oh, it's not really a jewel, is it? The jewelry that's in her sort of headdress and on her forehead. And then we're gonna paint on a design on her legs. So she does have patterning in gold on her arms and her legs. Again, I'm not very neat with painting. I was gonna stick it on in paste, but it was sticking out too much. Um, I wanted it to stay fairly flat, but I'm not very neat with these things. <laughs> I possibly ruined her in this section doing this. And we're gonna kind of crisscross the paint going up her legs. Then I've put a tiny piece of paste on the side of her arms, or sort of at the shoulder height. So mix it with a bit of water so it's nice and tacky. And then we're gonna push the arms into the paste. Then what you want to do is with a wet brush, just run over that, blending the seam out. So you can see where it's still a bit wet there, that will dry out as well. If you've still got a dip, just put a tiny sausage of paste over there. Just roll it out nice and flat. A little bit of water on there just to smooth it out. Then I've rolled some really thin strips of black modeling paste and these are going to be like the edges of her dress and these are going to kind of cover your seam anyway if you see them a little bit. We're going to put one across the back of her dress as well and then she's got some that go around her neck. Now I have painted like a gold collar on first so you would need to let the gold collar dry before you then add these black pieces on there. So I'm just bringing it down to the front. It almost fully covers the gold collar. I'm gonna put another one around there. And a third one. So keep them nice and thin, otherwise they're gonna bulk up the neck pretty quickly. Then I've got some little offcuts of thin bits of black as well. And we're gonna try and put these on to create the patterning that's on top of the front chest bit of her dress. Again, mine doesn't quite match exactly the same. Um, I struggled to get them to stick in place. They kept sticking to my finger instead and just coming straight back off. So she's a bit wet and shiny at the moment, but all that water that I added on there will dry. And of course you can use edible glue instead if you prefer. Just out of interest, guys, how many of you guys have used my molds using polymer clay? I do keep wondering if they work with polymer clay or not. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know how you get on with them if you have used polymer clay instead of modeling paste like I have done. So patterning on the dress done. I'm gonna take a little ball and push a little hole in the middle so we're getting a donut shape. This is gonna go on the front of her top, kind of her little necklace, just on there like so. And then what I'm gonna do is just finish off her hair at the back. So I wanted to bulk it out because at this point I thought it needed to be bigger. I don't think it probably needed to be as big as I did it. I then tried to put in the lines in with a knife, but the lines didn't wanna stay in very well, so I decided it was gonna be easier just to roll individual pieces of hair. So I took the hair colour and I cut out lots of thin strips and then I just wet them a little bit to make them sticky and then we attach them at the back and kind of wrap them over that piece of hair I've just put on. They're probably a bit bulky. At this stage I had actually been working on her for quite a long time when I was getting a bit fed up and I just wanted her to be finished. But yeah, they just kind of curl around under there. I, sh I should have tucked them in much neater than what I did. But once that's on there, we can add some gold to that jewelry and any other little bits in her hair. And then she's got some gold patterning also on her arms. So remember guys, please don't rush to do any of these bits. Let her dry so she's nice and secure before you do all this painting. So I've really, really diluted some black powder so that it's very transparent. And we're just painting over the top section of that body in between all those black lines that we put on earlier, but don't put that on the arms. And then I want the inside of her dress to just look a little bit more shadowed. So I'm mixing a gray food color in and we're just gonna paint that on the inside of the dress. Then I'm gonna take some more gray and I'm gonna kind of paint it in those lines that I drew onto the dress earlier. And on the edge of her dress up near the chest, I've almost painted little semicircles across kind of the top of her bust area. I don't know if you can just about see them on there. 
So she has got more patterning on the dress than that, but yeah, I'm not great with painting, remember guys? So, so I'm gonna leave it at that. So there she is, Mel from Arcane. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I realized I sped it up quite a bit. It took me a lot longer to make than I was expecting, but I really did want to have a go at just adapting the face mold and body mold to see what characters we could make. Let me know if you want me to make Jinx or any of the other characters from Arcane. Let me know if you find these videos useful, especially if you guys have got the molds yourself. Here's a quick look at some of what you guys at home have been making with the new Gemma face and body mold. I think you guys have done an amazing job with your creation. I have seen many more of these. If you do want to get yours featured at the end of the video, please do send us an email showing us what you've made with my molds or even what you've made from our other Facebook videos. I'd love to see what you guys create. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now.